When I say desert island, you might think of tropical paradises fit for a pirate's buried treasure. And you'd be right to do so, as there are thousands of islands around the world that fit this description. But the term desert island can often be misinterpreted, in that desert doesn't refer to the island having a desert climate, but it being deserted, no one lives there. There's around 2 million of these uninhabited islands on Earth, with only a minority being representative of this paradise stereotype. These kind of islands are either privately owned or unoccupied due to being too small and too isolated to sustain a human population. Some though feature such extreme climates and terrain that no humans have ever made an attempt to live there, such as the case for the subantarctic island of Bouvetoya. Found in the South Atlantic Ocean, Bouvetoya or Bouvet Island is arguably one of the most hostile environments on Earth. While it was once an active volcano, the island's last eruption took place in 2000 BCE. Since, the landmass has become nothing short of a frozen wasteland, with 93% of its 49 square kilometres being covered by a glacier. Bouvet was first sighted in 1739 by French explorer Jean-Baptiste Charles Bouvet de Lazier, although he was unable to land and didn't circumnavigate the island. His plotting of Bouvet's position was also inaccurate, leading to several expeditions failing to find it, like the second voyage of James Cook in 1772. This trend would continue all the way until 1825, when a British vessel would be the first confirmed landing at Bouvet, claiming it in the name of the Crown. The island would not be seen again by human eyes for a further 68 years, with sightings occurring in 1893 and 1898. But Bouvet wasn't set foot on again until 1927, when a Norwegian expedition would be the first to make any sense to stay on the island and later planted a flag to claim it for Norway. Given that Bouvet had already been claimed by the British over a century earlier, this was actually an annexation. The UK would go on to concede the island to Norway just two years later in 1929 without much protest, which historically we could maybe say is a little bit uncharacteristic of them. When Britain doesn't seem to care all that much if you claim their land, it probably means that land isn't especially valuable to them. When it comes to Bouvet, it's not difficult to see why. Bouvet's climate isn't so much extreme as it is oppressive. It experiences an average temperature of negative 0.7 degrees Celsius, with little variation throughout the year. February is the warmest at 2 degrees, while September sees the yearly low of negative 3.6, although the island has seen temperatures as low as negative 18.7. The combination of its marine and Antarctic conditions leaves the island dominated by heavy clouds and fog, meaning that few images are able to accurately portray its true size. In fact, it wasn't until 1985 that a Norwegian expedition saw sufficiently clear weather to allow the entire island to be photographed from the air. This resulted in the first accurate map of Vuvatoya, 246 years after its discovery. The icy terrain means that there are no trees present on the island, and non-animal life is limited to just 20 species of algae. In fact, one of the only signs of life present on Bouvet is the abundance of birds that call the place home. Dozens of petrel, skewer, prion and albatross species may be found across the mainland, while king, chinstrap, adeli and macaroni penguins form colonies on the beach Nairosa, one of the few ice-free areas on the island. Nairosa is believed to have been created by a rock slide in the late 1950s, and is by far the most accessible part of the island. Granted, that isn't saying much as the rest of Bouvet's landscape meets the ocean in steep, icy cliff sites. Southern elephant seals and Antarctic fur seals may also be found on Nairosa and the nearby rocky island of La Soya. The surrounding waters contain humpback, fin and southern right whales alongside hourglass dolphins. In 1964, the British naval ship HMS Protector landed a small survey team on the island of Nairosa, where they came across an abandoned lifeboat, likely belonging to a Soviet scientific vessel. A brief search was made, but no signs of human activity were found, and the lifeboat's exact origins remain a mystery. Now, we don't know if the occupants of that lifeboat ever made it to Bouvetoya, or if there were even any occupants at all, as the vessel may have been deployed accidentally with no one on board. If a lifeboat was in use, there's also a good chance that whoever was in it washed overboard before it hit land. But let's say they made it. Let's say you made it, and found yourself marooned on Bouvet's shores. What should you do? Well, the first thing you'll probably say is... Well, this sucks and decide to get the hell out of here. The first option is pretty obvious. Being an island, Bouvet is surrounded by water. Why don't we swim? No, I am by no means an expert in the field of long distance swimming, but can say with 100% certainty that you would not survive this. 
There's three core reasons that would make this trip virtually impossible, with the least relevant being the predators in your way. You won't be facing anything too fearsome on the island itself, but should you venture into the water, there's a small chance that you might have an encounter with one of the region's top hunters, the leopard seal. Bouvet is pretty far out of typical leopard seal distribution, but they have been sighted in the region and further north. Ocean dwelling predators tend to leave humans alone more than really give them credit for, but for the leopard seal, the small number of documented attacks is largely because the species lives in Antarctic regions where we are rarely in the water. When we do come into contact, they are often aggressive, territorial, and will readily stalk humans for kilometres on end. Leopard seals have been encountered as far north as Cape Town in South Africa, which happens to be one of the closest settlements to Bubatoya. But if you are able to make it this far, the real predator you should be worrying about is sharks. South Africa has the third highest shark attack rates in the world behind the United States and Australia. The region is host to mako, bronze whaler and blue sharks, although the species to really watch out for are bull, tiger and especially great whites. These three collectively make up over 64% of all recorded shark attacks throughout history, with great whites on their lonesome accounting for over a third of that total. The only other large carnivore we might find in any of these waters are killer whales or orcas, which actually predate on both leopard seals and all of the aforementioned shark species. Luckily for us, killer whale attacks on humans are vanishingly few, and none have been fatal in the wild. The same cannot be said for orcas held in captivity, where there's been dozens of incidents and a total of four fatalities. So as long as your journey doesn't involve entering SeaWorld at any point, we should be fine. But realistically, the issue of predators is just irrelevant when we look at what else we're faced with here. Bouvet is part of the sub-Antarctic zone, an area characterised by extremely low temperatures. Humans lose body heat about 25 times faster in cold water compared to cold air, which means that as soon as we leave the beach, we have a limited amount of time to get to safety. No matter the season, the waters around Bouvet are consistently going to be below 0 degrees Celsius, which gives us a maximum survival time of about 45 minutes. Realistically, even when swimming to maintain body temperature, you'll likely become exhausted and pass out in as little as 15 minutes. So our chances of survival are looking pretty slim here, but we could be okay as long as we got to dry land in less than 15 minutes, right? Potentially, yeah, I mean, you'd probably still die of hypothermia in that case, given that any island that close to Bouvetoia would be just as cold and hospitable, but it is possible. Except it isn't, because 15 minutes will not get you anywhere near the closest land as Bouvet holds the title as the most remote island on Earth. If you swam in a completely straight line, and we're in the ocean so waves and currents make that impossible, you would need to travel 1,600 kilometres to reach the nearest land. That land would be Antarctica, which is really trading one desolate landmass for another larger desolate landmass. Other options include Go Island and the South Sandwich Islands, which are the same story as they're uninhabited too. Really, what you want is to get to the nearest human settlement, which can be found either 2,200 kilometres away on Tristan da Cunha or 2,500 kilometres away in Cape Town, which are just about the same distances as the lateral spans of Saudi Arabia and Mongolia, respectively. So, um, <laughs> good luck. Just to put this into reference, the International Space Station has an orbital height of 408 kilometres. Bouvetoya's extreme remoteness means that when the station passes over it, the closest humans to the island will be in space rather than the Earth. In fact, this could still be true when the ISS is in any part of this region, provided there aren't boats or planes passing over. Generally speaking, it's normal to overestimate our abilities a little bit when it comes to things we aren't familiar with. I might think I can swim to Tasmania, but in reality I'd probably make it about 2 kilometers off the mainland and then die. But let's say you're not me, you're a professional swimmer with a lot of long distance training. Surely then, you'd be in with a chance, right? The longest distance ocean swim was set in July of 2021 by Pablo Fernandez, who managed a shocking 250 kilometres in 26 hours and 36 minutes. If you were to successfully reach the nearest land from Bouvetoya, you would need to break his record six times over. That comes with the additional caveat that Fernandez conducted his swim in Florida during the summer, where the threat of hypothermia was all but a non-factor. He was also aided by the strong current of the Gulf Stream, propelling him at speeds up to 100 metres every 40 seconds. Honestly, even making the comparatively tiny swim to the nearby island of La Soya would be incredibly dangerous for all but the most accomplished of swimmers, as you probably wouldn't be able to leave the mainland from this point due to the sheerness of the cliffside. To get here, you'd likely have to leave from Nairosa, extending the trip from 120 metres to 4.5 kilometres. And looking at the barren rock that is La Soya, what would this trip even get you? 
So I've hopefully made it clear by this point that trying to leave Bouvet on your own is outwardly just a bad option. For all intents and purposes, we're stuck here. I think my fascination with this island comes from a similar place to people's interest in the deep sea. An environment so outwardly hostile to human life, coupled with its extreme location, makes it one of the most interesting places in the world in my opinion. Bouvet is cold, but not the coldest, not when compared to Herald Island, where temperatures can remain below negative 30 degrees Celsius for over two weeks during winter. And the terrain is rough, but not the roughest, in that Bouvet doesn't hold a candle to somewhere like Apat Island in Greenland. No, what really makes Bouvet stand out is its remoteness. If what you're looking for is isolation, Bouvetoya is the absolute zenith. My next video will be on the Maned Wolf. Thanks for watching.